Now, Cuban diplomats at the United Nations have loudly protested and shouted down an event that was organized by the United States as part of a campaign to highlight the struggles of the political prisoners on the Caribbean island nation. Show and Bryce Pease reports. Chaos in the council. The usually orderly chamber, reduced to a shouting match between speakers brought in by the United States to draw attention to political prisoners held in Cuba, and scores of Havana's diplomats brought in to protest. You can understand very well why people feel afraid to speak their minds, why people are thrown in jail for speaking their minds with this kind of government, this kind of thuggish behavior. It has no place here in the United Nations. The Cuban government and its diplomatic representatives should be ashamed of themselves for the way they behave today. Diplomats seen here shouting in Spanish, Cuba yes, blockade no, in protest at the decades-long U.S. trade embargo of the island, which has been denounced as illegal by the U.N. General Assembly for a quarter of a century. But Cuba's envoy held the U.S. action in contempt and said Washington lacked the moral authority to give lessons on human rights to others. That country, with its poor adherence to international human rights instruments, for example, is the only country in the world that has not signed or ratified the Convention on the Rights of the Child, has a pattern of systematic violations of all human rights. While accusing the United States of undermining Cuba's sovereignty, Ambassador Camello held up a picture of a child held in detention by U.S. immigration authorities. This is a shame for the United States government. This is a shame for the implementation of all human rights instruments. This is a shame for a country like this to have children in this kind of situation. Why? Because they are immigrants, because they are not white, because they, are, they come from Latin America and the Caribbean countries. The United States have to explain this to the organization. The United States maintains that there are 130 political prisoners held by the Cuban government. Sherman Bryce Pease, SABC News, New York.